Yellowstone's largest geyser three times, confusing scientists. The world's largest active geyser has erupted three times in the past two months in Yellowstone National Park, leaving scientists puzzled by the sudden and relatively frequent outbursts. Steamboat geyser erupted on March 15, April 19 and April 27, according to the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, marking the first time since 2003 that the volcano has erupted three times in a year. Scientists are puzzled by the recent surge in activity in Yellowstone, a national park that sits atop a giant volcanic hotspot and straddles Wyoming, Montana and Idaho. Steamboat, like most geysers, is known for its sporadic eruptions, said Bob Smith, a distinguished professor at the University of Utah who has studied Yellowstone's geysers for 61 years. The last time Steamboat erupted was in September 2014, according to Reuters. What makes this series of eruptions even more unique is that they all happen in a very short period of time, you know, about two months, Smith told here and now's Jeremy Hobson. And that's unusual in its nature, but I've never seen anything like it before. The three eruptions were relatively small in scale for Steamboat, which can shoot water up to 300 feet high, and were also relatively small compared to the 2014 eruption. While scientists don't know why Steamboat erupted, they say the geysers are unlikely to trigger a major eruption from the supervolcano. There's no sign that a volcanic eruption is imminent, Michael Poland, a scientist who heads the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, told the Washington Post adding that the last eruption occurred 70,000 years ago. Geysers are fairly rare geological phenomena that only occur in a handful of places on the planet. Geysers erupt when magma heats gas and water in a reservoir beneath the Earth's surface, triggering a burst of water that lasts for a few minutes and then a burst of steam that can last for days. The process is similar to what happens when you put a kettle on the stove, Smith told NPR last year. You fill the kettle with cold water and put it on the stove. And as the kettle heats up, it takes a few minutes, he said. And eventually, when the pressure from the steam and the hot water is great enough, it opens the nozzle of the kettle, if you will, and out comes steam. Geologists disagree on what caused the latest series of eruptions, but they say it could be the result of thermal disturbances in the Norris Geyser Basin. Steamboat experiences smaller, more frequent eruptions than one big one. This system, which releases about 70,000 gallons of water each time, has to recharge its underground reservoir pretty quickly in order to have a high recurrence rate, Smith explained. The 2003 eruption was linked to thermal disturbances that killed trees and burned trails, according to the Park Service. Yellowstone's most famous geyser, Old Faithful, is an exception to the rule. Its regular eruptions, which occur every one to two hours, are monitored by a park-run Twitter account. Scientists believe Old Faithful erupts at regular intervals because it has a simple underground structure, Poland told the Post, Steamboat's plumbing is likely more complex, with irregular magma movements. That's what geysers do, they erupt, Poland said, there's nothing to be afraid of. Estimating the height of an eruption while observing a geyser can be tricky for a few reasons. There are often no reference points nearby, which can skew our perception. Similarly, while you can get a sense of the height of a skyscraper by how small the windows at the top are, the water droplets that shoot into the air from a geyser aren't a good reference point. Add to that the fact that the droplets start falling as soon as they reach their peak and, unlike buildings or trees, the fountain doesn't stop. 
However, by borrowing relatively simple techniques used in fields such as forestry, astronomy, and geodesy, anyone can measure the height of a geyser eruption with a fair degree of accuracy. For those of you who may have wondered during high school math class when you needed to remember and use the phrase, SOHCAH TOA. For this method, the only measurement that must be taken during the eruption itself is called the dip angle. This is the vertical angle above the horizon, looking straight at the horizon is 0 degrees and looking straight above your head is 90 degrees. To get this measurement, you can use a homemade clinometer, made from a protractor and a weighted string, or you can buy one, usually used in forestry or surveying. 